welcome back in uh, this uh, video session now uh, i will talk about the requirement to do hypothesis testing and uh, why do we actually go ahead and test the significance of a sample so why hypothesis testing at all to better understand this concept uh, i'm going to talk about a thought experiment and uh, uh, and ask you to follow through with me on this consider you know we have a population with every element having the same measure so imagine there's a population from which we're doing analysis and we're extracting samples in that population uh, let's say we are measuring the height of people and we're estimating the height of a country or a city now imagine if every person is having the same height so every element in the population every person in the population has the exact same height so what we are saying is that there is no variance in the population now if there is no variance in the population it doesn't matter any sample that we extract it will have the same mean so any sample that we extract the sample mean will always be equal to the population mean i e even if i extract a sample of size 10 50 even the sample will have no variance in it so the sample standard deviation will also be zero and the sample mean will always be exactly the same as the population mean so there is no error in our estimate when we are estimating the mean of the population in which there is no variance by extracting a sample and that sample size is irrelevant in this case because uh, as we mentioned earlier there is no variance however in the real life we never work on data like this real populations will always have variance in their elements everybody will not be the same height but imagine that everybody's height is very closely related so there's very little variance if there is very little variance for example everybody has a height which is between let's say 510 and 511 and there's no variance beyond that in that case also if i extract a sample i'm quite likely to get a very close or a very approximate population mean from there like there's no variance in the population or the variance is very small so even a small sample i'll be able to generate or estimate the population mean with very close uh, uh, precision uh, let's now take take this a little further for example let's say the the, uh, the variance in the population is very large if the variance in the population is very large what will start happening to the sample mean which i keep extracting the sample means will start getting less and less precise regarding the population mean and the sample standard deviation will also start increasing right so if you follow through with me so let's say i have a population over here and uh, this is the uh, the population dispersion if i look at it or the population distribution if the population distribution is very uh, very narrow right in this case there is very little dispersion in the population so we have a very small variance in this case the the samples that we extract the samples will also have less variance and the sample sample mean will start approaching the population mean but supposing i have another population here and this population has a very large variance so there there is there's a large variance around the mean over here right so in this case when i start extracting sample the sample mean could be lying over here it could be lying over here it could be lying over here right we uh, the sample mean will have a lot of deviation from the population mean so how do we uh, how do we account for that so what happens is if the population has large variance the sample will also have large variance so sample standard deviation will also be large and this gives us a little insight regarding the error in our estimate so if the uh, the sample that i am extracting let's say the sample mean comes out to be that the uh, the height of the uh, the sample is coming out to be let's say 6 feet tall so i have 6 feet uh, uh, as the sample mean right and the standard deviation the sample standard deviation comes out to be half a feet right and now i have another sample which says the sample mean is again 6 feet but the sample deviation in that case is let's say 1 and 1/2 feet in this case which which sample mean is likely to be closer to the population mean obviously the sample with the smaller uh, standard deviation why is that because a smaller standard deviation gives us a smaller uh, 
probable range which uh, the uh, the population may be having around that mean so similarly how do we try to measure how off is our sample by if our sample has a large standard deviation that means the population also comes from a large standard deviation therefore my sample is quite likely to to uh, diverge from the actual population mean and that level of divergence we can uh, apply or we can find out by using the central limit theorem and how do we do that we know that uh, repeated samples if we take repeated samples then their mean will follow a normal distribution so it doesn't matter so let me just uh, draw it out again so it doesn't matter what is the uh, the population distribution if i take repeated samples right if i take repeated samples and i and i draw the distribution of the means of the repeated samples the means of the repeated samples will always follow a normal distribution with the mean of the sample means so this is the sample mean over here so this starts approaching the population mean so this is this is this is approaching the population mean uh, mu and this is the distribution of the sample means over here this is not the distribution of the sample over here and this standard deviation of the sample means is a direct function of the sample standard deviation and we know this this is the standard error and the formula for standard error is sample standard deviation divided by under root of n which is the number of observations that we take right the larger the number of observations uh, the more precise our standard error becomes because uh, it starts going down so increasing the sample size has an inverse relationship but it is under root n so it does not go down in the same way or the same rate as we keep on increasing the the sample size right so smaller samples uh, a smaller sample standard deviation will give us a smaller standard error a larger uh, sample size will also give us a smaller standard error to a certain extent extending number of samples beyond a certain number will have very little impact because of uh, the square root over here that we see so it will give a logarithmic decline uh, if we uh, track standard error and uh, the number of uh, observations on a graph right now now that we have a now that we have a normal distribution around the population mean and we know that this normal distribution's variance is uh, is a function of the sample standard deviation we can figure out what is the likely error in our sample estimate around the population mean so we know based on the variance how likely is the population mean to lie somewhere on this distribution and therefore we can now start testing by applying the properties of the normal distribution that are we within the 95% range are we within the 99% range because we know at uh, in a normal distribution if i go let's say 1.96 standard errors that's 95% if i go 2.57 standard errors that's the 99% confidence interval so i can increase so i can include the concept of confidence intervals around my sample mean and by doing that i can figure out how precise is my measurement or how likely am i to commit an error when estimating the population mean using samples and that is the whole reason why we do hypothesis testing so that by using samples we can figure out how likely are we committing an error regarding estimation of the population mean so remember if there is variance in our sample right there will be a variance in our estimate as well and the amount of variance in our estimate is the likelihood of us committing an error